Hello friends, welcome to this session. In this session, we are going to prove Euclid's division lemma. In the last few sessions, we saw what is Euclid's division lemma. We saw some examples. We also saw some practical cases where we could explain Euclid's division lemma. Now in this session, let us try and prove it. So first of all, let us uh, go through what exactly is Euclid's division lemma. So lemma is, uh, for given integers a and b greater than 0, both greater than 0, there exists unique integers q and i are such that a equals b q plus r, right? So for any two um, integers a and b, there exists uh, another set of integers q and r and they must be unique such that a equals b q plus r and 0 is less than r less than b. So uh, let's first take an example and understand what exactly this means. So let's say I take 26 and 5, okay, where 26 is my A and 5 is B. So you know, you know from our previous discussion, A is called the dividend, the dividend, and uh, B is the divisor, divisor, and Q is the quotient quotient and r is remainder these are the four terms or four uh, things in this uh, relationship now let us take a as 26 and b as 5 so i can express this after div dividing 26 by 5 i can write 26 equals 5 times 5 plus 1 okay so if you see this is my dividend 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 this is my divisor divisor this 5 happens to be the quotient and this happens to be a remainder now clearly if you can see r is r this is r here so r is less than my b okay so uh, this is what is given by euclid's division lemma now um clearly let us uh, let us take another example so that it becomes much clearer so um another example could be let's say 57 is equal to 5 times 11 5 times 11 plus 2 so this happens to be a this happens to be b this happens to be q and this happens to be r Okay, now what are, what we are going to do is let us first write all multiples of five. So first of all, let us draw a line. Okay, so let us draw a line. Let's say this is the line, and and let's say uh, let me just jot down all the all the multiples of five. So let's say this is zero, this is five, this is ten, and this is fifteen, then. 20 then 25 then 30 35 and let's say if the line was a little longer yeah line was a little longer so 35 40 45 50 and 55 and 60 so if you see where does 57 lie so clearly 57 lies somewhere in the middle of 55 and 60 okay and for that matter any number you take if let's say let's let us fix b first b is fixed and b equals 5 okay now let us take any value of a let us take uh, 37 let us take a equals 37 where will it lie it will lie here between 35 and 40 isn't it let us take a as 25 where does it lie it lies exactly on 25 here let us take a as um, 29 so if you see a 29 will lie somewhere here somewhere here so why am I doing this if you see uh, any number any number when divided by 5 either lies on the multiple of 5 or it lies between any two consecutive multiples of 5 so if you see in case of 37 it was lying between 35 and 40 two consecutive multiples of 5 and uh, in case of 29 it was lying between 25 and 30 now if you see can I not write this as and here here are negative numbers as well so there is no restriction on 
uh, the sign of a and b so it can be any any two integers now if you see what is what is what are these multiples of five how can we express them so it is nothing but five times minus two this is five times minus one then five times zero then let me change a little you know take another color so that it becomes differentiated this is five into one this is five into two this is five into three five into four five into five and so on and so forth why am i doing this so if you see 29 lies between so if you see 29 lies between 5 into 5 and um, 5 into 6 so any any number any dividend for that matter any value of a can be expressed as some multiple of 5 and, and the, the dividend will lie between some multiple of 5 and its immediate neighbor isn't it now what was 37 like 37 was if you see this was 5 into 5 into 7 and it is 5 into 8 isn't it and 25 was was 5 into 5 since it is equal so hence this inequality is also valid and it was less than 5 into 6 so if you see generalizing can i not say any a any a lies between 5 into q and 5 into q plus 1 if you see these were the q's in case of 29 5 was the q in case of 37 7 was the q quotient in case of 25 5 was q isn't it so this is what i can say now what was 5 if you see what was 5 5 was my b this was b the the divisor isn't it so hence i can easily write b times q is less than a is less than b times q plus 1 isn't it isn't it now if let me just write this inequality afresh here yeah so let's uh, let's focus here so what is it if you see from this analysis we can say that bq divisor times quotient is less than equal to the dividend itself is less than is less than is less than b times q plus 1 now in this inequality if i subtract a positive quantity across the inequality the inequality doesn't change what does it mean so i can very well subtract bq from the entire inequality so let's say bq minus bq will be less than equal to a minus bq and will be less than bq i'll open bq plus so it is, it is bq plus b and minus bq is it minus bq okay so if you simplify this what will happen so i hope this this particular statement is you know understood to all of you all of you now hence if you see in this part it will it will become zero so zero is less than a minus bq a minus bq and is less than b and is less than b is it not is, is it not correct so let us say let us say let us say a minus bq is equal to r is equal to r then then what we what so now if you see a a can be written as a can be written as bq bq plus a minus bq bq plus a minus bq why because a bq minus bq gets cancelled so a remains so hence a can be expressed as this so hence a can be expressed as bq plus and what was a minus bq r so r isn't it so hence we we've proved the first part we've proved the first part that bq as there is for every a and b integers there exist q and r such that this relation holds so we for every a and b you will get one q and one r and hence the relationship hold now the second part is to prove that they are unique what is that so prove that they are unique what is unique that means for 29 when you express 29 as 5 into 5 plus 4 there cannot be any other value of this value this 5 or this thing such which will give you 29 again so it, it is valid or let's say 29 can be expressed uniquely only by this uh, if you have fixed the, uh, the the divisor right if the divisor is 5 
there is no way but this to express 29 you cannot have 5 into 7 and minus something to get you uh, or anyways we are talking about positive integers so yes you can have different values of q and r if you let negative integers also come in why because you can see 5 into 7 is 35 minus 6 can also be expressed as 29 but we are talking only about we are only talking about positive uh, values of q and r so hence if q and r are positive there cannot be any other way but this to express 29 okay so how do we prove that so we got here that there exists q and r but how do we know that they are unique okay so the best way in mathematics to prove such things is proving by contradiction so let us say that it's not unique let us say that there is there is you know uh, uh, there exists another pair of q and r which will give you same value a and b so let us let us try and understand that so yes here so if you see let us say that there exists so let us assume that now we are doing what part b of the proof that q and r are unique unique isn't it how do we prove that they are unique so best is let's you know start with the contradicting hypothesis let us say there exists two pair of q1 two pair of q q1 comma r1 and let's say q2 comma r2 there exists two pairs such that a is equal to b times q1 plus r1 and b sorry and a can also be expressed as a can also be expressed as a equals b times q2 plus r2 that is what is meant by let's say if, if you are trying to prove that there is only one q and r and you have to prove it then what do we do let us assume that there are two and then contradict our hypothesis and then we'll conclude that uh, this contradiction is happening because we are considering two different pairs of q and r so hence you know uh, it cannot exist so so uh, what do we do now so we can equate both of them so if you see if you let's say this is equation number one and this is equation number two okay so hence from one and two i can write bq1 plus r1 is equal to bq2 plus r2 and reshuffling you can find out b times q1 minus q2 right take this take this this thing in lhs and this thing in rhs so you will get what b times q1 minus q2 is equal to r2 minus r1 am i not am i not correct so hence what will you what what is what is observed from here so isn't it an integer q1 minus q2 is an integer why because if q1 is an integer q2 is an integer so q1 minus q2 has to be an integer from here we see that b divides r2 minus r1 yeah so b times an integer is if you remember our first session on divisibility so what was divisibility so divisibility was so a is equal to b times c so if b if if this kind of a integral equation is there that means uh, if a b c all are integers and we find this kind of a relationship then we say that b divides a so if you see here b times q1 minus q2 so you can assume q1 minus q2 to be c so b times c is equal to r2 minus r1 that is a here so you, you can clearly say that b divides r2 minus r1 so hence b divides r2 minus r1 but if you see in our previous case we what did we find we found that r2 was less than b if you see the previous case here we just proved some time back that if you see this was 0 0 a minus bq is less than b and a minus bq was r so r has to be r was proved to be less than b so here coming back to our proof here if you see if you see r r both r1 and r2 will be less than b so r2 is less than b r1 is also less than b then how can so clearly r2 minus r1 will be less than b so there is an integer which is less than b and you are saying that b divides that integer which is less than uh, b how is that possible A, for example you are saying that 
25 is divisible by 50 is not divisible by 50 right so it, let's say if this is b which is greater than this value so in no case a greater number can divide a smaller number since r2 minus r1 is less than b so we 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 conclude we conclude what do we conclude on so we conclude on that b doesn't divide r2 minus r1 it cannot yeah either this is not happening or 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 r2 r2 minus r1 uh if uh, from here uh, this this particular thing is coming from where when we considered r2 is different from r1 or this can be possible only when r2 minus r1 equals 0 so when this becomes 0 then b divides this r2 minus r1 so hence the only possibility is r2 minus r1 is 0 from here i will get r1 is equal to r2 and the moment r1 equals to r2 you put here r1 equals to r2 so what you can do is you can deploy r1 equals to r2 back here in this equation so this will lead to what b times q1 minus q2 equals 0 so since b is not equal to 0 a divisor cannot be 0 so only possibility is this value has to be 0 so hence q1 minus q2 is 0 so q1 equals q2 so hence if what do we see we see r1 equals to r2 and q1 equals to q2 so they are not distinct but same numbers so hence the second part of the proof is all is also done right so hence if there if there are two integers a and b there will exist there will exist what a q and r such that a equals a equals a equals b q plus r where r is less than zero equal less than equal to zero and less than b and q and r are unique unique for a pair of a pair of a and this is what is Euclid's division lemma and we could prove it here. Thanks for watching this video.